All right, it's time for part two of Angel's Trinity series. And this video is going to be very narrowly focused on two issues. And you see them here in front of you. One is the Trinity from ancient pagan sources. You know, anti-Trinitarians, they're like Adventists. They're birds. They just repeat the same thing over and over and over. Angel and I have been dealing with these same two arguments for decades. I'm so glad he has made a video on this. Let's put it out there. And let's just run these arguments to ground. So I think this will help some of you former Adventists as you run into these anti-Trinitarians. So we're going to give you these very typical arguments. Anti-Trinitarians, you are going to be refuted in this video. If you from now on, henceforward, use this to Trinity from ancient pagan sources or the word Trinity is not found in the Bible, you are not being honest. And you will see here in a minute. So with that, let's move on to the next slide here. And that's this. Here's Angel's side, I, uh, um, YouTube channel, that is. I recommend go there, visit him, and, um, look, and look at some of his videos. Some of them I have featured on this channel. Some I haven't. So go check those, those videos out. All right, here it is. The Trinity is from ancient pagan sources. And these anti-Trinitarians love to do, you know, just what I did here. Go scour the internet, find pictures of images of three, and say, aha, that's what the uh, Trinity is, but you know what you're going to see here in this video. Angel is absolutely going to refute this argument. Anti-Trinitarians, you are going to eat your argument. Tell me how it tastes when you get to it. By the way, if you ever use this argument again, given the information that Angel has given you here, you are being dishonest and we're going to move to the next argument that we hear all the time well the word trinity is not in the bible and anti-trinitarians usually stop there they never tell you what it means they just stop there you're supposed to know that it means what you see the second part of the sentence because it's not in the bible it's not supposed to be believed what bad logic you're going to see bad brains are behind this kind of argumentation and you will absolutely see that this argument too is going to be refuted so anti-trinitarians when this is refuted uh by the way don't ever use this argument again because you are not being honest like i said these arguments here is just bad logic and um, i could probably pick any one of probably two or three logical fallacies i just pick this one and it says when the orator or when the person making the argument uh you know ignores certain elements that are unhelpful for their claims uh see that's what you're going to see here there are arguments that are being ignored that are not helpful to their claims that actually refute their claims this is a logical fallacy so without further ado let's get to angel's video hi there angel ariano jr here and i want to welcome you to this edition of according to the scriptures i want to welcome you my beloved brothers and sisters fellow trinitarians and i also want to welcome my friends you anti-trinitarians and i do not mean this in jest i mean this very seriously and that's why i when i engage with you on the common board i engage with you with humility and respect but there are a couple of things that I want to cover before I talk about the content of this video very, very briefly. First of all, if you haven't watched part one of this series, you really need to. So I have provided a link for you in the show notes below. All you have to do is click on it, then come back and, wa and watch that one, then come back and watch this one, and you'll be up to speed. And so, secondly, I originally be started this series, and I had planned on doing part one, two, three, four, and five. So a five part series, but see, but what happened, I'm really new at this video stuff. And so as I began this series, I began it with like a classroom setting. Well, immediately anti-Trinitarians storm into the room, raising all kinds of questions on the comment board on both my YouTube channel and Jim's Academy Apologia. And so being forced to discuss certain things on the video so what i decided to do is make this an ongoing series more like about a dozen videos and i'm going to answer in the towards the end of them all of your common objections so if you if you bear with me be a little patient i will address them but that doesn't mean that i won't address them on the comment board and so now the content of this video this video is going to consist of refuting the false claim this that is commonly raised by anti-trinitarians that the word Trinity is not in the Bible. Therefore, as the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society has gone on record and claimed, well, if the Bible taught 
the Trinity. One would expect to find the word Trinity in the Bible, but it's not in the Bible. Therefore, the Bible doesn't teach it, and neither should you. That's fair enough. I can't recall where that citation is at because it's been decades since I uh, sold my extensive Watchtower library. But that's what I'm going to answer in this video. I'm going to refute that false claim, and I'm also going to address this false notion that the Trinity is derived from ancient pagan religions. So why don't you join me in watching this slide presentation that I provided for you, my brothers and sisters, as well as you, my anti-Trinitarian friends. One of the common objections that anti-Trinitarians often raise against the doctrine of the Trinity is that the word Trinity is not in the Bible. Therefore, we are told, it is not a biblical teaching. In fact, some anti-Trinitarians are adamant about this. I have seen this objection raised on the comment board to my first video in this series, on both mine and Jim's channel, Academy Apologia. Well, just because the word Trinity is not in the Bible, does this mean that the Bible does not teach it? Absolutely not. And here's one, at least one good reason why. The argument that the word Trinity is not in the Bible is a two-edged sword that cuts both ways. And I'm going to explain this in a moment. But before I do, I want to say to all you naysayers out there, all you anti-Trinitarians who use this argument, you need to drop this two-edged sword. And I'm going to show you why. This argument is a self-refuting statement. In other words, it is fallacious, and here's why. The argument that the word Trinity is not in the, in the Bible cuts both ways. Let me explain what I mean by this. Let's take the word sin, for example. The word sin does not occur in Genesis chapters 2 and 3. Yet, the whole world, including non-Christians, know from a simple reading of these two chapters that Adam and Eve sinned. In the garden. So the concept is present in these two chapters. However, the word is not found anywhere in the two chapters that record the fall of man. Moreover, there are eight different Hebrew words that convey the concept of sin, and they are presented there before you. So, eight different Hebrew words for the concept of sin, and yet not one of them can be found in these two chapters. However, we all know that the concept is there. Therefore, this proves that a concept can be present despite the absence of the word for it. So, although the word sin is not in Genesis chapters 2 and 3, this does not mean that these two chapters do not teach that Adam and Eve sinned. And likewise, although the word Trinity is not in the Bible, this does not mean that the Bible does not teach it. So what I'm saying is that, that the same unbiased rule must apply to each of these words. Therefore, as I stated a moment ago, a concept can be present despite the absence of the word for it. Returning to the anti-Trinitarian argument, the very same argument that anti-Trinitarians launch against the doctrine of the Trinity applies to the absence of the word in Genesis chapters 2 and 3. According to their line of reasoning, since the word sin is not in Genesis chapters 2 and 3, these two chapters do not teach that Adam and Eve sinned. But we know that this is not true because the concept is there. And this is all that the Christian church has maintained for centuries concerning the doctrine of the Trinity. Although the word Trinity is not in the Bible, the concept is. Therefore, just because the word Trinity is not in the Bible, this does not mean that the concept is not there. I am going to cite a few other examples of this, but if you're an anti-Trinitarian, please don't go anywhere, because I'm going to conclude these examples with one which you are absolutely going to love. Another word that is not in the Bible which many anti-Trinitarians use is infallible. Speaking of God's word, this word is not in the Bible, and they believe that the Bible is infallible. So according to their own argument, the Bible does not teach that the Word of God is infallible. Incidentally, the same is true of the word inerrancy. Next, we have the word Bible. This word is not in the Bible either, but anti-Trinitarians use it all the time. But according to their own line of reasoning, since the word Bible is not in the Bible, the Bible does not teach the idea of a Bible. Next, we have the word organization. Jehovah's Witnesses are very fond of using this word to describe their leaders in Brooklyn claiming that God has always had an organization to lead his people. Well, 
The word organization is not in the Bible in the sense that they use the term. Therefore, by their own line of reasoning, the Bible does not teach that God has an organization to lead his people. And so this is what I mean by a self-refuting statement. And so, according to their own line of reasoning against the doctrine of the Trinity, we'll apply it to this. If the Bible taught that God has an organization to lead his people, then one would expect to find the word there in the sense that they use it. But it is not in the Bible, so according to their own rule of reasoning, the Bible does not teach it, and neither should they. And now, all of you anti-Trinitarians out there who use this argument, here is the example that I told you you were going to love. And it's going to be one that carries the most weight, because this one cuts in two ways, but in the same direction. In other words, it cuts into two of your arguments, one of which is one of your favorite arguments against the doctrine of the Trinity. And speaking to my Christian brothers and sisters, this is an added bonus argument for you. The same argument that anti-Trinitarians lodge against the doctrine of the Trinity applies to another one of their arguments, that the Trinity is derived from ancient pagan religions. Well, guess what? I want to preface my answer to this by noting something that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society stated decades ago. The Watchtower Society has gone on record and maintained that if the Bible taught the Trinity, one would expect to find the word Trinity in the Bible. Well, this same argument can be applied to the anti-Trinitarian argument that ancient pagans believed in some sort of a Trinity. If this is true, then, one would expect to find the word Trinity in pagan religious writings. But guess what? The word Trinity is not found in pagan religious writings, not a single one of them. Therefore, anti-Trinitarians' own argument against the doctrine of the Trinity refutes their claim that the Trinity is derived from ancient pagan religions. The word Trinity is not in the Bible, nor does it occur in any ancient pagan religious writings. So if the Ancient pagans believed in some sort of trinity, one would expect to find the word trinity in their writings. But search as they may, and anti-trinitarians will not be able to provide at least one example where the term trinity appears in ancient pagan religious writings. Therefore, by anti-trinitarians' own line of reasoning, since the word trinity is not found in ancient pagan religious writings, these pagans did not believe in some form of a trinity. Therefore, the doctrine of the Trinity is not derived from ancient pagan religions. I mean, come on. Everyone knows that they were polytheists. They believed in many gods. Therefore, this is an empty claim, a self-refuting statement on the part of these anti-Trinitarians. So please, all of you anti-Trinitarians who use this fallacious line of reasoning, drop this two-edged sword and stop using this fallacious line of reasoning. Now, I'm certain that many of you anti-Trinitarians will bring the countless ancient Waller script inscriptions containing three pagan deities. Well, guess what? Again, do inscriptions like this prove that ancient pagans believed in a trinity? Nothing could be further from the truth, and I'm going to prove this in detail. In part four of this series, I have devoted an entire video on this subject encompassing temple wall inscriptions in ancient Egypt, the ancient Near East, and Mesopotamia, demonstrating that inscriptions containing three gods can be used to make it appear that ancient pagans believed in a trinity. But I'm going to exploit this misconception, so be sure to come back, all you anti-Trinitarians, and watch this one. But before we get to that one, we're going to look at some other religions that deny the doctrine of the trinity in my next video, because this is what I promised in the first video, and we're going to focus on seven-day Adventism and a couple of individuals who have crept in unnoticed into the church. So before I bring this video to a conclusion, I want to briefly summarize what we have learned today. Although the word Trinity is not in the Bible, the concept is. Therefore, I want to encourage all of my brothers and sisters around the world who have watched this video. First of all, I have provided you with several words that are not in the Bible, which many anti-Trinitarians use despite the fact that they are not in the Bible, which you can use to refute their objection that the word Trinity is not in the Bible. And secondly, we have learned that a concept can be present in the Word of God despite the absence of the Word for it. And thirdly, we have learned that the word Trinity is not found in any 
ancient pagan religious writing. So if an anti-Trinitarian tries to use both of these arguments, you know how to refute him. He can't, on one hand, argue that since the word Trinity is not in the Bible, this proves that the Bible does not teach it. And then on the other hand, claim that ancient pagans believed in the Trinity because the word Trinity is not found in their writings either. So remember, ancient pagans were polytheists. They believed in many gods. And now I want to say something to all you naysayers, you anti-Trinitarians who use the argument that the Trinity is not in the Bible. So this proves that the Bible does not teach the Trinity. You really need to drop this two-edged sword and use arguments that are cogent and can be sustained. Because like I've demonstrated, a concept can be present despite the absence of the word for it. This is a fact and it is undisputed. And so until next time, this is Angel Ariano Jr. reminding you always, my brothers and sisters, to do all things according to the scriptures.